Good morning to you. I am Mark Suddath, and here's what's up in the tropics. It is Thursday, the 8th of September, 2022. Quite busy still in the Atlantic Basin. Now we have Earl, a Category 2 hurricane, well on its way to becoming a 3 and maybe even a 4. That'll certainly help to pile up the ace points in the Atlantic there, the accumulated cyclone energy score. Then we have 95L out here, 70% chance of development, and really any more increase in organization with this system and it'll become our next depression. Way up there, almost exiting the top of the graphic, is Danielle, now a tropical storm. It is in its last hours as a tropical system. Finally, the colder water and the overall unfavorable environment of the far North Atlantic will eventually do Danielle in, and that'll be that. And then we have another area down here, might eventually become 96L. It's at a pretty low latitude, and really not sure exactly how this will play out over the coming days. We'll have to watch. The Atlantic is just marginally conducive for development overall. And that's reflected here in the five-day version of this graphic. The uh, area just off Africa there, only in yellow over the next several days, meaning low potential of development. And of course, in the eastern Pacific, we do have Hurricane K just off the Baja there. But it is a fairly large hurricane, and we can see that in just a moment on the satellite imagery, and uh, it'll certainly spread some inclement weather, squally conditions up the Baja towards Southern California. And you can see that a little bit here, even in the track map of our three systems. There is K in the Eastern Pacific. Zoom in on it there for you. Uh, yeah, going to track up along the Baja, weaken to a tropical storm over colder water, and then dissipate off the shores of Southern California and vicinity. But it will bring some rain and much needed rain at that for portions of Southern California and the Northwest Baja Peninsula region. Then in the Atlantic, we have Earl. It should pass just to the southeast of Bermuda with the worst of conditions, eventually strengthening to a Category 4, as I mentioned earlier. And there's what's left of the path of Danielle here in the coming day or so. All right, here's the satellite animation starting in the west there. There's uh, K off the coast of the Baja. Most of the heavy activity off to the right of the center there. Heavy rain, maybe some flooding conditions along portions of the Baja. Up the Gulf of California, moisture now spreading northward towards Arizona and parts of Southern California. A little bit of storminess in the Gulf of Mexico, but nothing organizing there. And then there's Earl, and let's just slide the satellite animation over a little bit. Earl's starting to get a more symmetrical look, more rounded appearance to its central dense overcast, as we call it. And once it does that, that eye should really start to become more defined, and Earl will be on its way to becoming the season's first major hurricane, maybe later today. Then there is 95L, kind of uh, disheveled, battling some wind shear, but it is trying to organize in the face of all of that, and it does have a chance to become a tropical depression, maybe even tropical storm Fiona over the next 12, 24, maybe 36 hours. And then finally, off the coast of Africa, there's that system uh, could eventually be tagged as 96L. We shall see. Now I want to show you this. Uh, kind of rare to have graphics related to a tropical cyclone in the southwestern United States, but here it is uh, out of Phoenix. Uh, you can see some of these rainfall totals expected over the next day or two. Flood watch in effect for obvious reasons. And, uh, you know, a decent chance there, about 40% chance of some serious flash flooding. They need the rain, but it could come down fast and furious out there, creating some flooding conditions so be aware of that if you have interest in the region. Another infographic here out of, uh, this is probably out of the Weather Service San Diego. Kind of odd to be talking about this, but there it is. Hurricane K having potential impacts to Southern California. Just be aware of this. I'm sure people are talking about it out there. Uh, kind of a rare thing to see, obviously. Uh, but the risk of uh, some east winds bringing some of that heat down out of the deserts right down to the coast. Flash flooding areas and, of course, maybe even dangerous driving conditions because the roads aren't wet out there very often. K will make them so in the coming days here. All right, real quick look here. This is the HWARF, the Hurricane Weather Research Forecast Model, a specific model just for hurricanes or tropical cyclones, and that is Bermuda that you see there at the end of the animation. At least the hurricane force winds, that is that sort of purplish area, uh, those stay away from Bermuda. This is about 10 meter wind. So this is the mean sea level pressure in the 10 meter wind. 10 meters is about 35 feet or so up. So yes, those should stay just offshore, but any significant wobble to the west or an expansion of the wind field 
over the next 24 hours. And, and uh, yes, Bermuda could see the potential for hurricane force winds. All right, I'll take a look at all of this and more in greater detail during my hurricane outlook and discussion video later this afternoon. And I will also take a look ahead to see what might be coming over in the next week to 10 days. Until then, have a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks as always for tuning in to What's Up in the Tropics. Again, I am Mark Suttoth. I'll be back with you later this afternoon.